So we're doing the um, review for our first test in pre-cal. And we've got 16 questions here we're going to go over. This should help you with your review and hopefully cement anything that you're not sure of. So we've got a point x, y on the unit circle and we want to find it. We're given the x coordinate and we need to find um, what the y is to find that point. The quadrant is three. Remember, we need to know the quadrants. We know the, the sine of it, like the positive or negative, not the, like sine is in cosine. All righty, so number one, we are given that our x is equal to negative three-fifths and we are in quadrant three. So we're gonna use the equation we were told um, it's on the unit circle, so we can use that equation. When it's on the unit circle, the origin is zero, zero, and so that's why we just have x squared plus y squared. So negative three-fifths squared plus y squared is equal to one. Squaring this, we end up with nine over 25 plus y squared is equal to one. We'll subtract that from both sides. And let's make our one equal to our denominator. So that way we have 25 over 25 to subtract it. So y squared is equal to 16 over 25. We'll take the square root up both sides. So we end up with plus or minus. Remember, this will be the square root of 16 over the square root of 25. Square root of 16 is four, square root of 25 is five. So plus or minus four over five. Now, is it positive or negative? Well, we're in quadrant three, so that tells us it will be negative. So y would be equal to negative four over five. So our terminal point, we were given the x, or not our terminal, but just our point, and our y is negative four over five. That is your final answer. Make sure you put it in point format because we're asked to find the point. All righty, number two. Find the terminal point and reference number on the unit circle for the given arc length of T. So for number two, we are given that T is equal to negative five pi over six. Now, if you remember, we're looking for the terminal point and the reference number. The reference number is how the shortest distance back to x. And if we have a negative angle when we start here, to, or to x-axis, we start here, it's negative five pi, so over six. So that's gonna land us over here when we're going negative. So our shortest distance back to the x-axis is right here. So for our uh, reference number, we are looking at, um, that would get us to pi, so it'll be pi minus that five pi over six. And it's not double negative, because you're just, you're talking about the length. The length is five pi over six. The negative tells us that it went, what direction it went in. Now we need a common denominator of six, so this will be six pi over six minus five pi over six will get us pi over six. So that's our reference number. We want the reference number so it's easy to figure out our terminal point. This is stuff that you need to know for test one. You need to know those points on the unit circle. For pi over six, it's gonna be square root of three over two and one half. So square root of three over two and one half, that's our terminal point that we're using to find what it's actually going to be. Now, negative five pi over six puts us in quadrant three because on our angle, like we were talking, we started here, we go five pi over six, we're landing over here into quadrant three. And x and y are both negative. So that will be our terminal point. So we use that reference number to find the terminal point and then the quadrant to find um, the actual signs. All right, so that's the answer we're looking for. We've got two of them, terminal point and the reference number. 
All right. On three, we want to find the exact value of the trig function at the given real number. So we are given for number three cosine of 11 pi over 6. And we want to find the exact value. So we're going to use that reference number again. So if we're looking at 11 pi over 6, we are looking at going clear around to our fourth quadrant here. Think about 2 pi is equal to 12 pi over 6, right? That would be here. So we're just one short away here. So we're looking at our reference number is 12 pi over 6 minus our 11 pi over 6, because 12 pi over 6 would be 2 pi, and that gets us our pi over 6 for our reference number. So if we're looking at quadrant 4, we know that our x is going to be positive, and we need to know that because we're dealing with cosine, and cosine is our x value. So we're looking at the value of cosine of 11 pi over 6 is equal to cosine of pi over 6, because that's our reference value, and the cosine of pi over 6, that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. We just used that value, except we changed it to a negative, so it will be equal to that. All right, let's go look at number 4. Number 4, we need to find the value of the six trig functions if it is defined at the given real number t. We need to know that there are six trig functions. So t is equal to 3 pi over 4. So with 3 um, pi over 4, we know that that's going to land over into quadrant 2. And if we don't know, we need to go learn this. 3 pi over 4, because this would be 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. It lands us in quadrant 2. And we need to know that because of our signs again. So we know we're going to be in quadrant 2. And so our point will be negative square root of 2 over 2 because the x value will be negative in quadrant 2. And the y is square root of 2 over 2. So we want to find the sine of t. Remember, that's equal to our y value, so square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of t is equal to x, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. And then our tangent of t is equal to y over x, which will be the square root of 2 over 2, divided by negative the square root of 2 over 2. This one we don't have to flip and multiply because we've got the same thing over itself. So it'll be equal to negative 1. You can flip and multiply it, but they are exactly the same value. If they're not, you need to uh, multiply by the reciprocal. All right, so with sine, we have cosecant t. That's going to be 1 over our y, which is 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. This will help us do just what I was talking about. We don't divide by the fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. Times 1, it doesn't change anything. But we can't have that square root of 2 in the bottom, so we've got to multiply by 1, which will just be our denominator. So we'll have 2 square roots of 2, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is 2, and it always ends up being what you had when you had the two square roots. All right, going with cosine is going to be our... Uh, secant of t, which is 1 over x. So it'll be 1 over the negative square root of 2 over 2, which gets us negative 2 over square root of 2 times the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, because we've got to do the same thing, and we end up with negative 2 square roots of 2 over 2. So my question is, are these reduced completely? They are not. We have to take this to square root of 2, and negative square root of 2, because the 2's will reduce here. All right, our last part then is going to be our cotangent. Cotangent t, remember, is going to be the um, same thing as our 1 over tangent. 
So 1 over tangent t, we can use that, or we could put our uh, cosine over sine. But because we already know tangent is a whole number, we can just do 1 over negative 1, which is going to be negative 1. Or we could have done our sine over cosine, our cosine over sine, cosine t over sine t. You need to know that you can do both. So it'd be negative square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. Either way you look at it, we get negative 1. So you've got to know how to find all six of those trig functions. This is not just a little bit so you can see it all at one time. So sorry about that. All righty. Next thing we're going to look at, let's go look at number 5. So the terminal point determined by a real number t is given, find the six trig functions. So we get to do it again. All right, so for number six, oh, sorry, number five is seven over 11 and six square roots of two over 11. So those are our two, um, our x and our y. And we need to find those six trig functions again. So remember, our sine t is equal to y. So it's 6 square roots of 2 over 11. Our cosine of t is equal to x, which will be 7 over 11. And then um, our tangent of t is going to be our y over our x, which is 6 square roots of 2 over 11, divided by 7 over 11. Again, we don't divide by fractions. We multiply by reciprocals. So 6 square roots of 2 over 11 times 11 over 7. Well, the 11s will cancel, and we get 6 square roots of 2 over 7. All right, now we need to find our reciprocal of our sine, which is our cosecant. So cosecant of t would be equal to 1 over y, which is 1 over 6 square roots of 2 over 11. So that'll get us 11 over 6 square roots of 2. We have to multiply by the square root of 2 on top and bottom. We end up with 11 square roots of 2. And then on the bottom we have 6, whoops, sorry, 6 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, so 6 times 2 will get us 12. All right, let's go do secant. Secant t is 1 over x, which will be 1 over 7 divided by 11, which gets us 11 over 7 when we multiply by the reciprocal. So that one was nice. Let's go do um, cotangent. I'm going to give cotangent a little more room. So cotangent t, we can either do 1 over or we can do it the other way. I'm going to do it the other way this time because this is not a pretty answer. So let's see if we can go the other way. So we would have our x over our y. And so we're going to have 7 over 11 divided by 6 square roots of 2 over 11. So 7 over 11 times... 6, oops, sorry, 11 over 6 square roots of 2. The 11s will cancel, and we have 7 over 6 square roots of 2. Well, we're still going to have to clear that square root of 2 over the square root of 2. So we have 7 square roots of 2. 6 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 will get us 6 times 2, which is 12. And you could have done 1 over this and still gotten to the same spot because it would have reciprocated it. But I like to show you several ways you can do things so that you're um, learning and making those connections and seeing how these um, work together. All right, let's go look at number six. Number six says to use the Pythagorean identities, find the value of the six trig functions of t. So the sine of t which that should not be capitalized, is three-fourths, uh, and the terminal point is quadrant two. All right, so it's number six, the sine of t is equal to three-fourths, and we're in quadrant two, and quadrant two, again, is always about our signs. 
So we're going to have to use, it says to find the value of the six trig functions, we're going to have to use our Pythagorean um, theorem or identity to do this because we need to find cosine. Once we have sine and cosine, we can find the rest, but we need to find what cosine is. So we're going to use our sine square t plus cosine square t is equal to 1. This is just similar to our unit circle equation. So we have 3 fourths squared plus cosine square t is equal to 1. This is 9 over 16 plus cosine square t is equal to 1. Subtract the 9 sixteenths. Make this 16 over 16, so we have a common denominator. So we have cosine squared t, and 16 minus 9 will get us 7. So 7 over 16. Take the square root of both. We get cosine of t is equal to, this is going to be the square root of 7 over the square root of 16. So this will be square root of 7 over 4. So plus or minus the square root of 7 over 4. Now is it plus or minus? Remember we knew that it was in quadrant 2, so that tells us cosine is negative. So the cosine of t is negative the square root of 7 over 4. So we found what cosine is equal to. We knew what sine was. So we've already got two of our trig functions. So I'm going to list them so you can see them. We know that sine t is equal to 3 fourths and cosine t is equal to negative square root of 7 over 4. So that's two of our answers right there. Now from there we can find the rest. Remember that our cosecant is going to be equal to that 1 over our sine. So 1 over 3 fourths, so it'll be 4 thirds. And secant t is 1 over cosine t, which will be 1 over the negative square root of 7 over 4. So we don't divide by that fraction. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So it will become 4 over negative square root of 7. We have to multiply by that square root of 7. So we will end up with 4 times the square root of 7 over 7, and it'll be negative. So that's our secant. Now we still need to find our tangent. So tangent is going to be sine over cosine. So that'll be 3 fourths divided by negative square root of 7 over 4. Don't divide by fractions, multiply by the reciprocal, so 4 over the square root of 7, don't forget the negative sign. 4's will cancel, we end up with negative 3 square root of 7, multiply by our um, denominator as over itself, and we end up with negative 3 square roots of 7 all over 7. Let's go see if we can do cotangent the long way rather than doing the reciprocal of that. So this will be cosine t over sine t. So this will be negative square root of 7 over 4 divided by 3 fourths. So negative square root of 7 over 4 times 4 over 3. And we end up with negative square root of 7 over 3. So that's our final one. And what you could have done before you rationalize the denominator, you can see this. That is our tangent. You could do the reciprocal of that because that's basically what you get. You can take a couple of approaches as long as your math is clear. All righty, let's go to our next problem. So that was number six. We're on to number seven. All right, so number seven tells us to determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. So we have to go back to what we know about even, odd, or neither. So if we have f of x is equal to x cubed plus the sine of x. Remember that from algebra, we know to find 
the even, odd, or neither, we have to find f at negative x. So we're going to plug in negative x for each term. So well, negative x cubed is going to be negative x cubed because there's three negative signs. And we need to know if sine is an odd or even function. And we know from our studies that cosine and secant are the even functions, but sine and um, cosecant and tangent and cotangent are odd. And that means that negative is going to come forward. So minus sine x. Now, is it odd, even, or neither? Well, remember that it is odd if all of the signs change. It's even if none of the signs change. And it's neither if some of the signs changed. But all of our signs changed, so we know that it is odd because all signs changed. Let me write that again in case you're not aware of that. It would be even if no signs change in the equation when you plug in that negative x, and neither is some signs change. Got to know to plug in the negative x, though. All right, let's go to question number eight. Question number eight says, from degrees to radian, find the measure of the angle with the given degree. So we have 64 degrees. This is where we have to multiply and change it into radians. So if we had degrees up here, we have to have degrees at the bottom. So we're going to divide by the 180 and multiply by pi. This will get us 64 pi over 180. We can reduce it by Two, if we don't know the whole of what we can reduce by, we can divide by two and get 32 pi over 90. They're both still even, so we can take it to 16 pi over 45, and that would be our answer. Always simplify. Number nine tells us to find the degree of the angle that's given to us in radians. So we are given 19 pi over, one, oh, over 18, sorry, and we have to change it to degrees. And we know that if we have a pi up here, we have to have a pi down here so they cancel and get the 180 degrees on the top. Well, the pi's will cancel. So now, um, and we can see also, if you can't see it, you could see 18 goes into 180. So you can kind of, let's pull this out here so it's a little bit easier to see. Divide by 18. 18 goes into 80, 180. It'll go in there 10 times. 19 times 10 would be 190 degrees. Or you can multiply 19 times 180 and then divide by 18 in your calculator. But if you can see it, it can save you a little bit of effort. All right, let's go look at number 10. Number 10 says to find the corresponding angle if the terminal point determined by t is this. So if this is our terminal point of negative 1 half, square root of 3 over 2, and we have to find the angle. First of all, let's look at the signs. It's negative for the x and positive for the y. So what quadrant does this land in? Well, if we go back to our unit circle, Negative x, positive y lands us in quadrant 2. So we know we're in quadrant 2. Now we also need to know which one this is. I've told you that you need to understand these and know them. Well, that square root of 3 over 2 tells me that the second number is a 3. So I know that this is going to be um, a pi over 3 angle. Now, because we're in quadrant 2, this will be 2 pi over 3. That would be the angle of um, our deal. And it asked us to find the degree measure and the radian. So that's the radian measure. If I know the radian, I can find the degree. If you know the degree, then, you know, you can do that. But I can take 2 pi over 3, so this is in radians. So that's one of our answers. And I can do what I did a minute ago, and I can take it to a degree. 
180 divided by pi. The pi's will cancel. 3 goes into 180 60 times. So now I have 2 times 60 is equal to 120 degrees. So that would be my degree measure. All right, let's go look at 11. The terminal point of T is in what quadrant if we have cotangent, so let's get number 11 here. We have cotangent of T is greater than zero and cosine of T is less than zero. We need to find the quadrant. Well, greater than zero tells me it's positive and this one tells me that it's negative. So where is cotangent T greater than zero? Where is it positive? We discussed that in quadrant one, everything's positive. And for cotangent and tangent, X and Y either have to be both positive or both negative. So quadrant one and quadrant three is where these are going to possibly be. Now for cosine to be negative, it has to be on the negative side of the number line there for it. So it's quadrant one, uh, two and quadrant three. And where do those match? Well, we have a quadrant three in here. So quadrant three will be our answer. All right, number 12. Write the first expression in terms of the second if the terminal point determined by T is given, is in the given quadrant. So we have to write cosine in terms of sine in quadrant four. Again, that's for the signage of it. So we're doing cosine T in terms of sine T quadrant four. All righty. So we're back to our Pythagorean identity of sine squared T plus cosine squared T is equal to one. I want cosine in terms of sine, so I gotta solve for cosine. Subtract your sine squared from both sides. We get cosine squared T is equal to one minus sine squared T. Taking the square root of both sides, we get cosine of T is equal to plus or minus the square root of one minus sine squared T. So we're in quadrant four, and we know that cosine is positive in quadrant four. So we will have cosine t is equal to the square root of one minus sine squared t. And that's your answer. You've written cosine in terms of sine, but that quadrant helps us know the signage. All right, we're on to number 13. We're almost done. So the angle measure given is in standard position. Find two positive angles and two negative angles that are coterminal with the given angle. Remember, coterminal means it coterminates. That means it stops at the same point. So that means you've got to go around the circle, either 2 pi or 360 degrees, either way. Um, and then you can go double that for a second one. All right, so two positive, two negative. So we have 72 degrees is the angle. For, so for our positive, we're gonna take 72 degrees plus 360 degrees, gets us 432 degrees. 72 degrees plus twice around would be 720 degrees, gets us 792 degrees. For the negative, Side of it, we're going to subtract. So minus 360 is equal to negative 288, and 72 minus 720, which is twice around again, is going to get us negative 648 degrees. So these are our coterminal angles. All right, now number 14, we are going to do. Um, 7 pi over 12. 
So 2 pi would be once around, 4 pi will be twice around. So for our positive, we have 7 pi over 12 plus, let's figure out what our 2 pi would be with a, a denominator of 12. So 2 pi over 1, we need a common denominator of 12. 1 times 12 is 12, so 2 times 12 would be 24 pi over 12. And then if we double that, we'll get 48 pi over 12. So we need 24 pi over 12, and 24 plus 7 will get us 31 pi over 12. And then 7 pi over 12 plus twice this would be 48 pi over 12. And that will get us 55 pi over 12. So there's our two positive angles. Now let's go do our negative. And I do know how to spell negative. I'm just, that should be negative. Sorry about that. Negative? Yeah. It's all good. It's late. All right, so we have 7 pi over 12 minus 24 pi over 12 will get us negative 17 pi over 12. And then 7 pi over 12 minus 48 pi over 12 will get us negative 41 pi over 12. So there we go. And it is an A. It's on the handout. All right, this is what happens when you do a lot of math in a day and your brain gets tired. All right, number 15. See, there's negative right there. Find the length of the of S of the arc that subtends. Remember, subtends is opposite a central angle of measure 7 radians in a circle of 9 centimeters. So for number 15, we're using our formula of S is equal to R theta. So here our S would be equal to that radius that we were told is 9 and the um, the theta was 7 radians. So 9 times 7 is 63, and it was given to us in centimeters. So that's our answer. All right, let's look at number 16. So a central angle theta in circle of radius 11 meters is subtended by an arc of length 17 meters. Find the measure of theta in degrees and radians. So we've got to do degrees and radians. So for 16, we're using the same um, formula we used, but this time we need to find the measure of theta. So remember, we talked about we could divide by r. So theta would be equal to s divided by r. So that we just solving for theta. All right, so we are told that our S, our arc length, was 17, and our radius is 11. So this would be equal to 17 divided by 11, and that's the radian measure right there. Now we have to find it in degrees. So 17 divided by 11, we want the degrees on top, so 180 degrees goes on top and divide by pi. This time our pi won't cancel, but that's okay. 17 times 180 will get you 3060 divided by 11 pi. Use your pi key in your calculator and you'll get 88.5 degrees. So that's your other one. So make sure you can do it in both radians and degrees.